watercolor land is a little broken. Watercolor land is getting really precious and really highfalutin. And Christy Rice, I am tired of it. <clears throat> so first things first, uh, I've been dealing with a lot of trolls, but I've also been dealing with a lot of folks with very well put together thoughts and well-crafted comments that have a very cruel edge to them out there in watercolor land. And it has become a lot to cake. Perhaps I shouldn't look at comments. I get a lot of advice, but I am a one woman brand owner. And in this climate, being a brand owner, your, yourself and your product are one and the same. <clears throat> I've been running businesses since 2003. And I've seen the ebb and flow of brand ownership and the trend of being more behind the curtain to being completely transparent, to being more polished and having that beautiful grid on Instagram to now it being about full-blown transparency. And I've always been in the transparency side of things. <clears throat> but what I've always been a proponent of is responsible kindness. And I am seeing that dwindling in our little corner of YouTube. And, I, and I, I'm sure it's dwindling in YouTube proper. And I am tired of it. <clears throat> Being a brand manager has become something that is taking away from my peace, my time with my family, my focus. And I'm tired of it. And yes, yes, friends, I am responsible for my own emotions. I am responsible for my own res responses to others' emotions. But I also feel as someone with an audience, a community, better said, I feel a responsibility to speak up. <clears throat> and that is why I'm here today. Let's take a look at um, the first comment I see is there will always be idiots. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Sarah says that as a sound tech in her previous life that multiple devices recording sound that are too close to proximity to each other can mess with each other. Yeah. Um, boundaries, people. So I do uh, want to say uh, that the review, uh, the frugal crafter review I reached out to Lindsay. I was fine with it. I had hoped for better, but I was fine with it. I felt like it was done in a balanced way. This, what I'm here to talk about today has nothing to do with Lindsay, the way she reviewed it. I don't agree with her kind of final assessment, but of course I don't. Right? But <clears throat> what... My issue is with just this general feeling that folks out there behind their keyboards think they know everything and feel entitled to tear people down. And I, I want to call it out. <clears throat> so I, I don't, I've said this on Instagram yesterday. I'm saying it here. I don't need anyone to go and defend me. I don't, I'm not asking for that. Um, I'm going to start painting here soon because it's all that I know to do to manage the kind of feelings, the intensity of feelings that I'm having. Um, and I also want to show you and call it defending, call it what you will, but I feel compelled to show this community what some of what I went through to develop my palette that I love dearly. I, 
again, just want to reiterate and reconfirm that, you know, we can, we can interpret so much from the way a review is given, the tone of voice, the, you know, but bottom line, when I reached out to Lindsay, I was like, we are cool. I felt like overall, it was a positive review. But what happened in her comment section, and I do believe, I'm not sure, but some of it may have been deleted. What happened, it, it, the review gave a voice to not just trolls, but to folks that believe they know exactly the definition of professional, that they have it truly definitively figured out. And I have always pushed against that kind of stance, that kind of teaching, that kind of presence in this art world. Whether I am teaching a beginner or a soul that aspires to be a professional and sell their work. I don't have all the answers. No one does. You may have more answers than I, but you don't have them all. You haven't lived in my body, painted with my materials, used the exact co combination of supplies I have used. You may not speak for me without repercussion. But I will be kind. So I'm not going anywhere. The title was something I wrote this morning because I was truly and still am truly asking myself, can I still be a product designer? Can I still navigate what has become a very like tumultuous climate? And I don't know the answer, but I do know I can still paint. I will always paint. And so I'm going to do just that. And we'll continue to chat. If you are watching on replay, thank you for being here. This little more somber version of Christy. <laughs> um, but I still have my joy and I still believe I still believe in what I created. I still believe in what I created. Reviews are for consumers. They are. But what I think folks don't understand who perhaps have never run a business, developed a product, marketed a product as an individual, not as a corporation with a you know a round table of execs guiding them is that it is personal my brand is me paint crush is christy rice no one else is speaking for me so when you come at me let me rephrase that when you speak ill of a product that you possibly have never used, you speak ill of me. And I just believe with all of my heart and soul, and maybe this is kismet for 2024, we need to be more responsible with our communication. We type something and it goes out into the ether and you, you just assume it's all well and good. You don't know how your words will land. You have every right to them, but I believe we need to be more careful. I believe we need to better understand how our words may be undereducated, may contain logical fallacies. Look it up. Look it up. Okay, I promised myself I wasn't going to get spicy. We need to be more responsible. Myself included. There were comments that I added to Lindsay's comment section. I had her permission to comment. 
I went back and deleted. There were like two of them. I'm speaking to myself as well. So I promise that the energy is about to shift. Uh, Teresa, the spray mister that I use, um, I don't know the exact brand name, but if you head to um, the description um, uh, after this live, I will will link it um, or just search Christy Rice Amazon influencer. I hate that word, but that's what they call us. And it'll take you to my Amazon page with all of my favorite stuff. And you'll see it there under like um, random things, random art supplies I love. Oh, I love this. The ether promotes recklessness. People really need to stop and think. Anonymity has encouraged people to be mean and hateful. Stand with your ethics, Christy. Yes. Um, I don't believe Lindsay crushed my sales. Um, actually, we had an amazing, we had a um, amazing sales day yesterday. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think she did. Um, you know, I have to remember, and we all have to remember. You know, go on Amazon, check out the reviews of my palette. They good. <laughs> we good. Um, I think what I'm. Yes, thank you, Virginia. Yes, don't forget to boop. If you're watching this, give it a boop. Uh, Ralph Christie for president. That's funny. So we have to remember that um, YouTube is one world. And then there's the rest of the world. And that's sometimes something I forget very, very easily. Right. The love far, out, far outweighs the negative. But isn't that so true that we, uh, that we hear that negative so easily? So I'm just going to take you through. Um, uh, some of the stuff that I did over two years ago in developing this palette, many of you know that I am an avid collector. I'm a ridiculous collector of watercolor. Um, I say with a confident heart that I probably, that I own most everything out there. Um, I'm still working on a few things, but um, I, it's pretty ridiculous over here. All right, all right, it's pretty ridiculous. So. I come to the development of this palette uh, very similar to what Lindsay, huge collection, uh, a lot of painting experience. However, we have very, very, very different styles, very different styles. Um, and that, that sets the stage for the tone and the outcome of a review. Um, so early on, I... I didn't want to copy other brands, obviously. You know how I feel about that. But there were there were just watercolors that I had fallen more deeply in love with. Case for making being one of them, especially their fluorescence. Um, Roman Schmal uh, is one that I actually fell in love with after the development of my palette. However. I, I, I just brought him out because I have to show you something. Um, it's almost like I had creative ESP. Um, and then we have Lucas. This little blue here inspired me deeply. Um, I think it's this one or it's this one. I'll show you soon. Um, is this looking? I'm sorry. This is Rosa. 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 Not Lucas. We don't actually. Uh, Lucas change our formulation, not too thrilled with it, but um, Rosa inspired me. Um, and I'm going to show you some swatches and show you some of the, the techniques that I used when I received samples from my manufacturer um, to make sure that what I was going to call professional quality actually lived up to that. So um, that naming structure, that that me attaching that name professional, number one, you go on Amazon and you're going to see, you know, crazy titles, strings of words, almost every watercolor palette on there has the word professional in it. So that's one aspect to this. But for me and my brand, I actually stand behind using that word to describe my paints. And I'm going to show you how and why. Um, this is my M. Graham palette. Um, as many of you know, I like to make palettes from tubes. So that's what you're seeing here. Um, I've actually shared many of these palettes transitions on this channel. This is, um, is this Daniel Smith? This is Daniel Smith. Yep. DS. Daniel Smith um, was 
heavily inspired by Daniel Smith's um, Buff Titanium. And actually, but I wanted my version of Buff to be a little warmer and to be creamier and more intense. And you will see, you will see it indeed is that. Um, ah, I hope these don't fall because let me tell you what, what, when these palettes fall, it is like chaos. All right, here's, here's, here's the, you know, the elephant in the room. Ah! Oh, no, I'm kidding, I'm sorry. Couldn't help myself. Um, I took the, um, I have like 15 of my palettes here to my right, but I, I got a brand new one um, with the brand new packaging. Here's the new light fast note. Um, I will say the one thing I was, I'm going to be honest because I'm here to be honest. The one thing I was super, super bummed about with, with Lindsay and I, like if she were standing here, I would tell her that, um, tell her this, like, Lindsay, why didn't you reach out to me? You knew I was sending you the new packaging. And I specifically, when I emailed her said it had the light fast, um, info on it and it had the pigment info. When you didn't get that, why didn't you email me first? She She's not at any, you know, she doesn't have to email me, but I just wished she would have been like, hey, I don't know if I got the right thing. Can you confirm or, didn't, you know, can you confirm this? But she didn't. And that bummed me out. But again, still totally things are copacetic. I'm okay with the review. I'm happy with it being balanced and not mean like some others. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate you so much. I want the elephant. <laughs> Gina says, I saw Lindsay's review. Please don't let that ever stop your art path. Yeah, pigment loving artists like me. Right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I've, I, that's fair. You know, I am not, I, I've called, I've, I've been called out for saying this, but there are pigment nerds and there are non-pigment nerds. I am a self-professed non-pigment nerd. I know enough. I know what I need to know, but I don't let it bog me down. And those who love to dig into it, I don't judge you. I actually think it's cool and I'm slightly jealous because, yeah, it's just not in my DNA. Um... There are a lot of pans out there. Yes. Yes. Um, Todd says, you've helped me and inspired me. Please keep doing what you do. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not questioning being here on the channel. I'm just questioning like product development and how I move forward, honestly. Um, <laughs> Teresa says, I invested in Roman because of you. Uh, fantastic paints. Yes. Um, art and diamonds with... Eskies, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, you have my heart and my prayers, dear. You are so incredibly kind and generous. And I feel that you deserve the same response from others around you. God bless you, my sweet friend. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, no, I don't I don't believe there's any jealousy involved. Nope, nope. Again, this 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 isn't this live today isn't about Lindsay. It's not about the frugal crafter. It's not about how she delivered her, re her review because there have been other reviewers. It is about what goes on in the comment section. It is about being more kind and more responsible here on the YouTubes. Okay. This is a big one, Holbein. Holbein was a huge, huge one for me. Um, I'm terrible at remembering the names. This one, the number is HW032. This one was a huge inspiration for my palette. Um, and then also the shell pink. I, I think that's actually the name of a similar color in Mission Gold, the original formula. Mission Gold is another one. These are all I have left of the original formula of Mission Gold. And this um, greenish yellow, huge inspiration uh, for my palette. And then, of course, Windsor & Newton um, was uh, Opera Rose. Huge, huge inspiration. And then this little guy next to my opera rose, I got to pull her out. I forget the name. See, again, non pick up. Um, it's Quinn Red. Yep, Quinn Red was another um, huge inspiration for me. But here's the thing yes, the pigments that I chose to make this happen more affordable because number one, I was doing a silk screen tin. 
It was very expensive. No one else is doing it to this caliber and that costs money. Number two, I beefed up my packaging to make sure things didn't arrive, dented, scratched, anything more expensive than you would think. You know how you get stuff from Amazon sometimes and it's literally just like the item thrown in one of those bubble opes? Yeah, because Amazon doesn't care. They put the onus on you to make sure that your packaging stands up to what they do to your product. And they they literally, like if I send it into them like this in like a cello bag, they'd be like, okay, and throw it in a bubble ope. I kid you not. All right. And I was not able to order a lot of these in the beginning because number one, huge risk. Number two, I didn't have the funds. It was an unproven product. All right. And then number three, I believe with my heart and soul, I add a ton of value to the product beyond the product itself um, with the exclusive uh, teaching that I offer on every single one of my products. I know how much time goes into it, how much production time, planning time, and all the things. You all know. Everyone, the trolls know. The commenters who comment snarkily, maybe not in a troll-like fashion, they know how much professional artists charge for an hour of their time. At least 50 bucks, right? And these were the things I thought of when developing my product and developing the price. Again, I hope you don't feel like I'm defending myself, but it has actually been a long time since I've talked about the development of this palette. There is a live that is still in archives that um, it's a live where I actually got blindsided publicly. Um, people are actually referring to that live in the comment section on Lindsay's review um, and sharing some unkind things about that live as well. Um, so I just felt like it was time. All right, so let's actually paint. Okay, my magnets are like sticking together. I'm gonna take a look at a few comments though. Angela says, I have the elephant and I love it. Woohoo! Yeah, I was super bummed about that. Like just a quick email, like Christy, I don't think I got the right thing. Really bummed me out. Um, when I saw the review yesterday and saw that she had the old packaging that talked about the, there being dye in, in my paints, I was just stick to my stomach. Um, I have, I will be talking about that more, um, but there were never dye. There was never dye in my, um, my paints. It was a massive um, uh, language barrier. Uh, my, my original, the person I was originally working with to develop my paints was pregnant, went on maternity leave, and then the person that came in her in her place really cleared things up, got me even more documentation from third party testing and so on and so forth. I mean, I had all the documentation that I needed um, to sell in the first place, but she was able to get me more and really clarify things. And I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't catch it the first time, but there was never die. There was never die in my paints, but we can talk about that more later. I'm being open. I'm embarrassed about it, but it is what it is. And here we are. I do not believe that Lindsay was mean. I don't believe she's jealous. I didn't feel it was snobbish. He has a different way of speaking. I would have, I would have um, delivered differently, but that, that is neither here nor there. And I'm not upset about it. I almost spit my food out though, when she said that my palate is like junk food. <laughs> it tastes good, but it's not good for you. I almost died. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I don't know what to say. That was funny. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everyone does have a right to their opinion. And this is what I, I guess I should expect um, to a point. But some of the, it just, the, the tone of some of the commenters on YouTube, there seems to be about, honestly, there's about a hundred of them that are common across multiple channels. When my name is brought up, that there seems to be a little tribe um, that is um, quite unkind. Um, and, and the reaction to my paints on some YouTube channels is so different than the reviews I get on Amazon. Now, probably some of y'all are going to run and give me junk reviews on Amazon, but go for it. Um, yes, 
I understand that I, 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 I guess I'm a public figure in this, in this watercolor world, which I have trouble even saying because it makes me uncomfortable. Um, but I also have feelings and I have a right to them as well. I know. I, I, um, sorry, friends, I'm reading comments. I definitely, I've been reading Lindsay's comments. I think she's like kind of taken aback by the response. Um, she's taken, I'm getting the sense that she's taken aback by the response of my defenders, but I honestly wish she was a little more taken aback by some of her, um, what seems to be her community. I wish we, I do also wish the tone would be better set for some of the ways that that, that those comments are being delivered. Um, someone said to me today, you know, that as the YouTuber, you can set the tone, which is what I've been trying to do since this review came out. I've gone on Instagram. I've posted in the community here. I have tried to set the tone for what I hope you as my audience will do if you choose to comment on any review sites. Um, so that is something I also wish would happen. But again, there's absolutely no hard feelings. I actually would love to collaborate with Lindsay, have her on the channel, go on her channel. I think we'd have a blast. Um, yeah, absolutely no hard feelings. Now I wanna make sure, cause I'm really bad at like making sure my brushes are clean, but we're gonna be swatching a little bit. I just activated these. Jenny says, unfortunately, we don't have your products in South Africa. I've learned a lot from keep your chin up and you're a wonderful person. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think a collab would be really fun. <laughs> I do. There are 300 of you watching, listening, um, popping in and out today, and that is blowing my ever loving mind. Um, so thank you for being here. I'm going to start with my blue. Um, funny thing, if you've been around this channel for a while, like the vanity names that I've given my colors, I don't even remember, okay? <laughs> I don't remember. I will say the shell pink, the, I mean, okay, it's called Flow. All right, I gave them vanity names, whatever, because some people like that. I'm neither here nor there with it. I don't remember them. So, the blue. Okay, one thing that, um, my, my spirits are lifting. One thing that drives me insane when I watch reviews is um, use your best paper when you do a review. Please, please use your best paper. I am using um, Academy. It's not even my best, but it's 100% cotton and I love it and it's great quality. Um, I just please use your best paper. I know you got arches. I know you got it. All right. Please don't use something that, you know, the sizing may be wackadoodle. I think that's just fair to any paint maker. Um, but that is an aside, and I did not plan to say that. But I did anyway. All right, so I'm just going to do a little compare poo to the Rosa. Um, I don't know if I... I was still in the process of building my Rosa palette, so I do not have these labeled. But there she is. Just to show you now, um, I wasn't trying to necessarily always match colors um, with my inspiration, but I was sometimes trying to match opacity, kind of the, the playfulness on the page that certain colors had. This is another one. Yeah, this is more like the one. I mean, this is more of an exact color match. Um, but Rosa definitely was in my brain when I was developing this palette. And this is what I did when I was developing this palette and got samples. I was making um, swatches and doing side by sides because guess what? I knew I wanted to call them professional. And I knew that I was going to get backlash. And I knew that I needed to be able to stand behind it. My version of these colors, my professional version of these colors are not as light fast as some others that you can get in the market. But they are together. They are curated. They're going to produce magic. And you get education with them and beautiful packaging. And of course, then you can, I've been using this palette for what, two years now, almost exclusively. So you have a lot of paint alongs that you can do with this. So um, I'm still so proud of that and excited about that. 
Um, and just feeling that like chill in my soul, like, like that, not chill, the, the sparkle in my soul, just saying those last few sentences makes me want to be okay with developing more product because I love doing it. I love creating a product that has a twist that gets you more, that gets you to a place of happiness and success and joy in your painting quicker than traditional methods. Yeah, you're right. Um, it just depends on what you swatch for. If your audience doesn't use arches, that is true. That is true. But paper um, makes such a difference. Um, so what, sometimes when I watch these reviews, I'm like cringing because I also, another thing that I cringe at, what I try to do when I review paints is really go from that almost mass tone and then wash it out. And a lot of the reviewers don't do that. They create kind of like a puddle of the same looking kind of the same coverage of paint. And I'm like, I don't get that. Like, y'all, this is watercolor. We want to see it mass tone right on down to almost nothing. And uh, my paints do really some cool stuff in the in-betweens, right? Like, look at this. So this is, um, hi again, what's the name of my, yeah, Punchy. This is Punchy. And I, I wanted you to see these dry. And I mean, you could come in here and say, well, you didn't swatch these in front of us, so I don't believe you. Well, that's okay. Bye-bye. Okay. So this is my punchy. And you can see, like, the cool stuff it does in the transition from mass tone or almost mass tone to fading out. Right? Love it. When you're swatching. And I'm not even a big swatcher. Please do a decent gradient. Please. Anyway, these two are Roman. This is a mix of two Romans. I'll show you later. This is also Roman. <laughs> Christy, your swatching game is stellar. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer, I see you. I saw your comments before I came live. I love you and appreciate you. You are like my biggest fan. Um, I would get away from the professional label drama by calling it high quality curated paints, brushes, et cetera. I think a lot of drama does exist between hobbyists and pros who do commissions. Yeah. Uh, I do commissions with these paints. So I don't know, like I may, I think that is a valid, uh, uh Sela, I, and I know you've told me how to pronounce your name before and I'm sure I messed it up again. Um, really valid point. Actually so much. I'm going to put this up on the screen. Um, but I still, I guess it's like rage against the machine type of thing here. Like I still feel like I want to push back against that drama because there are pros who are doing commissions with Cotman. And in my opinion, I was using Cotman when I was 11 years old and Cotman is so boring and Cotman still has fugitive pigments and Cotman, you know, and on and on and on. So I struggle with this, this, this line that's drawn between hobbyists and professionals because I don't think there should be a line. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's um, kind of arbitrary. I think it's assigned by people who want to feel a little bit better about themselves. I'm just talking about the general population, not one person. I think it's just, uh, you know, any kind of naming structure is just a way for us to categorize people and efforts. And I don't feel the need to do that. I don't know. All right. I just don't. Okay. But, but it's a valid consideration and perhaps, perhaps I will in the future. Although I just had 5,000 of these boxes printed. So not anytime soon. Now I, I actually want to check something. It may only be in my listing on Amazon that I say professional trying to remember you know i do a lot of different things every day and sometimes my memory is not so hot full disclosure on the front of this i say set of 12 solid pigments in a limited edition tin i wish i hadn't said pigments i wish i would have just said watercolor paint because they're not actually you know what i mean but life happens um there's the the pigment numbers um i think the only place that i actually say professional is in the listing, <clears throat> whatever, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I don't see it on my packaging anywhere actually. And it, I think it's just in the listing, which um, I have to, you know, to, in, in order to rank with similar palettes, 
I've got to use the word professional or I won't rank. So that that is one consideration. Just being super, like super, super straightforward with y'all. Um, but again, it's a valid point. Okay, so I just want to show you, I hadn't painted with Roman prior to developing this palette. However, it's almost like I had creative ESP. All right, because they are, this combo is so similar. Um, hello. People think because you use golden, for example, your work is automatically more professional. Liquitix acrylic argument, it's ridiculous. And it happens in the acrylic world. Yeah, it, it, I honestly, I do believe it's, it's ridiculous. Like, no. So this is punchy, right? Punchy? Dear gosh. Dear gosh, I need to leave this out because I'm ridiculous. I don't remember my own colors, vanity names. <laughs> Let me get backlash for that one. And oh, just so you know, these are printed representations of the colors. Okay, so punchy. Again, look at that. When you swatch, friends, please do yourself a favor. You'll be so much happier. Mass tone, wash it out, okay? It's watercolor here, friends. It's watercolor. We want to see that paper sometimes. Sometimes we don't. But yes, no, my colors are vegan. They're not going to move like core like uh who else has ox gall in them schmenka windsor and newton although windsor and newton don't move that much either generally speaking in my experience um who else has ox gall yeah it's schmenka windsor and newton daniel smith and core of course core <laughs> they have their own um what is it that patented kind of uh proprietary ox gall um i forget the name of it Anywho, so this was, this is a combination of Roman, uh, let's see, because I don't remember, Quinn purple, and then I did a little bit of this one, what is that, mineral violet. How funny is that? There's some creative ESP, y'all, all right, all right. Um, I, how cute. I just have to show you. I have my Romans in my hellebore tin. By the way, the tins are coming. The general consensus in that review was everybody loved the tin. So mwah, thank you. Windsor and Newton. I am falling a little out of love with Windsor and Newton over the last year or so. Um, I'm not ready to put like words to quote me by to it yet. I have to, I have to work out my feelings. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is passion from my palette. Get that mass tone in there. There we go. All right. And rinsey rinse. And ombre that bad boy out. A little more water, clean water. Get her going. All right. Heavily, heavily inspired here by... I gotta find it. Um, Windsor and Newton, Opera Rose, Twin Red. Let's show you how cute is my Windsor and Newton. Uh, I think I filmed the transition of this palette. You can find it. I will try to list that. These are not sprayed down. Windsor and Newton really needs to be activated and kind of get, get smudgy before you use it. Um, there's the Opera Rose. I actually find their opera rose to be a little trickier to build. It's possible, but it's tricky. And then blender out. Christy, are you going to release a tube set to use with your tins? There's no plans of that. No. Um, I'm just, I'm happy with the half pan situation. Was that the one or was this the one? Eh, whatever. Um, this was more about the character. And I was trying to get, I didn't want a fluorescent, right? I didn't want a fluorescent pink because I knew I had the fluorescent yellow and I didn't want more than one fluorescent, but it was about also the character, the intensity, the brightness, that that really nice pink to make some really awesome purples. Um, and here's one I did earlier. This one was Passion. And then this was um, Windsor and Newton, Opera. And then what the heck was this? 
Let me see, because it wasn't what I just did. Maybe it was this. Look at the weird stuff Opera's doing. Look at that. You see that? You see that? I don't know where to put this. I'm going to put it right here. Nope. I don't know. I don't know what I did. But anyway, this is definitely Windsor and Newton. As is this. I don't know why that's being weird. A little bit of sizing. Yuck there. But there's my paint. There's theirs. So fun. This was another one I did earlier today. This was Holbein. This is mine. This is Windsor and Newton. This is mine. And a little bit of a dirty brush. So fun. So fun. I really love my manufacturer. They really were able to help me bring this crazy vision to life. I wasn't a fan of the review. Could have been worded better in positive criticism. It's okay. We, we all speak differently and navigate this stuff differently. All right. Next is my um, sweet. This one is stellar in mass tone, very opaque, right? Rinsey rinse. Oop, that water is dirty. No bueno, I might have to skip out. And then highly influenced, you could guess. Anybody have any guesses? What influenced my peachy, creamy, peachy color? Anybody, anybody? I, I actually said it earlier, so. It is. Thank you, Stacy. Cindy says, I love your paint. It's so creamy. I have a set of your brushes and just ordered another. Oh, thank you. Um, so it, um, yes, my mood has improved since I started the stream. Absolutely, it was much more serious. Anyway, it's Holbein. Holbein, this is my Holbein set. It used to be in a black travel tin um, about two years ago. I think I moved it into this vintage. And this is the pigment number. I forget the name. It's probably like Juan Brilliant or something. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Here's another thing I wanted to say that's really important that I do say. Lindsay and I disagreed and other reviewers and I disagree on me using the, the, the professional name. I have given reasons why I believe my paints are professional. I'll reiterate them here really quickly. Number one, just because a paint is not of a high light fast rating does not mean it's not professional. Every brand that I've mentioned here today in these tins has pigments in their formulations that are not super good light fastness, okay? So that's that's one of the reasons. Number two, I use pure pigment. Uh, I may not use the same pigments, the higher quality versions of the pigments. I may have chosen one or two pigments that are more affordable for a reason, but I use pure pigment. There's no fillers. And now Lindsay had set, has said, um, in several of her comments in different ways that, you know, my stuff is manufactured in China. You really don't know what they put in there. True. But you know what? We don't even know what we put in our food in the U.S. So, <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm going to stop now. But according to the third party testing, variety of testing that was done on my products, there are no fillers. There are no optical brighteners. There are no additives. End of story. That's what I got to go on. And says, I recently found you in your channel and products. I'm delighted with what you bring to the table for all of us. You have brought me great joy and a feeling that I can do this and you can indeed. Thank you, Deborah, too. Thank you, Anne, for the comment I just read. Thank you, Judy. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I don't like the, the anti-China um, narrative. Not, I don't believe that that was... Uh, Lindsay's in, intent at all. I did not get that from her comments, but um, it has come up um, from others. It has come up in comments. It's something I'm constantly fighting back against. Uh, I work with a small manufacturer in China, family owned manufacturer, love them dearly. Like literally they sent me a Christmas present. Can I, okay. You know what? I'm going to just show you this. Like, look at this. Gorgeous. Isn't this gorgeous? 
I just got paint on it for the love. Look at that. Okay. Like this is what we do. I'm going to be sending them a gift for Chinese New Year. Right? Like we are family. Okay. Like we just, it needs to stop. Jolene <laughs> says it's getting cold in my car, but I don't want to go. Um, Jane Davent Davenport is huge and calls hers professional. Nobody called her out on marketing. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk about this a little bit because I do feel like, and I don't know what it is. I feel like, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to share this, but I am going to share this. Okay. I have always been a target. I have just been that kind of person that people pick on. <laughs> it's like, and it's okay. But I don't know. I just feel like, I just feel like it's needling. It's picking, picking, picking. And I don't know why. There's something about my face. Let's just pick on her. She's cute. She looks like she might cry. Yeah. <laughs> so tired of it. Like, here's the proof, internet. But still, I suck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this color, this is a color that stumped. Lindsay. And by the way, to the best of my knowledge, this manufacturer does not make Arteza, does not make Meaden. I, good Lord, tired of hearing about it. This was the color that inspired this one, but I wanted more coverage. This is called yellowish, uh, greenish yellow from the original uh, formulation of Mission Gold. As you can see, I'm very sad with what is remaining. All right, very sad. I wanted my yellowish, greenish, goldish to be more intense at mass tone, to be slightly more opaque, but to still do the really cool magical stuff in the middle of the wash. That was the inspiration. I don't understand the defensiveness and victim behavior. Uh, you're making a product, take the criticism or not. Oh, I'm taking it. This is drama for drama's sake. Okay, um, you are entitled to your opinion. Um, I don't feel like a victim, but I, I, get, I can understand why you would interpret it that way. Um, and I knew some would interpret this this way, but I prayed about coming live and I decided to come live. So. It's okay. It's okay, Puga Saurus, Puji Sar. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I'm really bad at pronouncing things. I'm not trying to be passive aggressive. I do have trouble pronouncing things. It's a known thing I talk about. So, um, I'm. If if this live isn't bringing you joy, you can click away. Thanks. I I guess you know I. I, I, I bring it on myself. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm telling you I was the little girl growing up that got made fun of. But it's a fact. I, I was. Um, if you want to feel that I'm trying to make myself the victim, you have every right to that opinion. Um, but it's just the reality of what made me me. So sometimes that like little girl in me comes back and it gets super like, uh, my self-esteem gets super like punched in the gut so all right this color y'all i don't know i this is called um <laughs> thrive this is a color that i would mix and i it was it's kind of like um it's got some ochre notes it's got some maples vibes to it it's got some like oh gosh like something like this department from from Holbein, <laughs> can't remember the name, but richer, right? Little, almost like, it's like this color, but maybe mixed with a little bit of like a sepia, not, no, 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 not sepia, like a, a burnt umber, nope, burnt sienna, little like reddishness to it. Um, I can't fully explain where this color came from, but I do know that it acts on the page for me like a professional watercolor would. Uh, the one thing that I could not make happen with my watercolors was granulation. You can see um, Windsor and Newton's Opera Rose granulates. It is divine. It's not something I can make happen. 
How does one get fluorescent yellow with no dye? Uh, I, I don't know, but again, I'm not a pigment nerd. I am going from what documentation they gave me. I actually required them, uh, my manufacturer, to do additional third-party testing that is kind of in collaboration with the United States. Um, and I'm not seeing any evidence of dye in them. Yeah, I love what you did with my colors too. Absolutely, Rachel. Indeed, this is the place to vent. The good and the ugly, it's all the good and the ugly, right? It's always follows by the good. Yes. Um, Emma also says, I've bought your brushes and paints, and honestly, it's my favorite palette. Um, I have other, I'm assuming you meant I have other legacy brands and yours is the one I reach to all the time. It forces me to be more creative. Keep going, Christy. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> okay, well, when Lindsay said my fluorescent was too bright, it's actually funny. You'll see when I compare it to the case for making fluorescent that inspired me. It's kind of funny that she said that. Uh, Michelle, this is a, a pop-up live. Um, I needed to vent. I needed to be with my community. Lots of me being emotional and, um, you know, probably defensive and all the things, but I'm here with my people. So um, it was it was only announced about an hour ago. The neon is best for highlights. Um, uh, Stacy, I'm going to highlight this, Stacy. This is important. I think people confuse Chinese politics policy with Chinese people and business, not the same thing. Maybe that's where the negativity regarding me in China comes from. Absolutely. You said it. And I confirm it in my understanding in production and manufacturing with the Chinese over the last three plus years. Oh, I'm finished with my Cotman. I saved up 150 euro and want to buy a watercolor set. What would you recommend? Oh, Roman Schmal. Go with Roman. Go with half pans. Um, so you can try out more colors, but go with Roman. Go with Roman. Because it like after Cotman, I think your your mind will be blown, but it won't be like startling and scary, if that makes sense. Like if you went to core after Cotman, I think you might like hide under your painting table for a day or two, honestly. But like, yeah, I would go with Roman. I think Jackson is having a sale on Roman. Oh, nice. Sorry, friends. I am just, even when Zara Newton states their opera rose has die. Oh, okay. Pre-Raphael, I, I, um, it's the information I have um, after confusion with my manufacturer. I have documentation that I am okay with and feel confident with um, that my paints do not contain dye. Um, but at the same time, no one ever knows anything 100%. And I don't care too much personally in my own personal artwork about using dyes and or light fastness. And that is not the first time I have said that. So that's what I got on that. Anywho, gosh, this is getting a little stressful. I don't like it. All right, here is my um, tend. I, I love this kind of Viridian kind of vibe, but cre I wanted creaminess. All right. And what inspired me with this color was, you won't believe, um, M. Graham. I don't remember. I, I don't have my swatch, um, my swatch pages for this out yet. Oh gosh, for the love, Christy, like ombre that bad boy out like you've been pontificating about. All right. I just want to say again, so this is a couple colors that inspired me. This is one of them. Um, and then I'm going to go back to what I was about to say in terms of, I just want to say again, this one's pretty staining though, that I have found um, with M. Graham. Um, and then was it this one? Yeah, I think it was this one. And then it was almost like a mix of these two. 
it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> there were moments of gold. And okay, I'll stop. I'm feeling better. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can see what I did here. This was tend. And then this was some of the M grams that ins inspired it. And I did these about um, about an hour and a half ago. So they're good and dry, you know, um, good and dry. Nothing, nothing on the finger. Here's my takeaway. I didn't read this ahead of time. Most of us are not pros and are not buying paints to make money on. We buy what we feel called to and are doing things for us and maybe some small gifts for others. Indeed, amen and hallelujah, yes. Yeah, I'm excited about the stamps, Jennifer. I am. Um, Jennifer is talking about my stamp set. I don't pull it out, why not? This is my new swan uh, swatching stamp set. It's gonna be launching us uh, maybe next month. Gotta get those, those empty pallets. Um, this is a water resistant, it's, you know, you got a stamp, let her cure, like, you know, be responsible about it. But um, once it's dry, it should not bleed. It is not bleeding in my tests. And then these are the stamps. So um, coming out soon, coming out soon. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you for leaving a more detailed encouragement. Thank you. Again, I just want to say, friends. I have shared some things during this live, things that I wish maybe Lindsay did different. Um, maybe I got a little like edgy talking about certain, certain conversations, certain narratives that kind of were at play in her comment section. But again, I really respect overall how she handled, how she executed the review of my products. Truly, I do. So I just, I want that to be made clear again. Um, I love my brown. Oh my gosh, I love my brown. I wanted something warm, but still that something that felt like a color, not just like, let's paint the earth, you know? I feel like sometimes browns just don't feel alive. And I wanted mine to feel alive, right? Um, let's pull out the Schmenka. I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, my Schmenka set is the largest that I own. Look at it. It's huge. This is like a 12 by 9 vintage palette. I, I have them all. Yes, if you were wondering. Um, but let's get into it. I was kind of down here in the, uh, what are these called? This is Indian Red. I was definitely inspired by that one, but with a little more orange. Indian red, I feel like has a little more, almost like a purple undertone. Though mine was a little more mix of Indian red and then um, all from Schmenka, Venetian red. I was down in, in that town when I was thinking through my brown. See, let's go back to my green. Gosh, I love the mass tone where the, the mission gold actually, it's harder to build up the mass tone in the mission gold. Lisa says, your entire palette is alive, beautiful, and exciting. Thank you. Um, uh, Roman has a pretty Indian red. Oh, gosh, I think I might have it. Mm. Michelle, I'm bad. I buy any time I have money. Always up for trying new supplies. <laughs> That's me. I'm, I'm there with you, sister. Okay. My red is quite staining. But not wrong with the staining color. And this one was actually a little bit more inspired by core, which I have to grab, hence my voice fading away. This is my core palette. I really should wash this out. I decide to walk away from the staining color before I wash it out, brilliant. I also loved, um, this was a happy accident, but how when you wash 
this red out, it goes quite pink, like a very convincing pink. Love that. Staining paints terrify me, not gonna lie. No, I get it, I get it. Um, just use a lot of water, everything will be okay. All right, more water the better. So yeah, core was more of my inspo here, just the intensity. Um, and kind of the way that it plays on the page. Not so much a color match here. Why is my core bubbling? That's interesting. I'm just like grabbing from all the core reds. You can kind of see some similarity there. I'm gonna lift back on this a little. But yeah, I was so in love. See how this, when it lifts, it almost goes more rust. Um, and again, I didn't plan for what happened when my red was lifted. It was very much a happy accident that I was very excited about. Yeah, see, there's that staining. But don't be scared, because look, you can manage it. I know, Donna, the negative comments and people are an attempt to stop me from being joyful. Obstacles don't block the path. They are the path. Ooh, that's good. Do you know where you could buy the art supplies that ships to Europe? Um, are you asking where if my supplies ship to Europe or if there are something comparable that would ship to Europe or just need a little more clarification there? We need more painting for joy's sake flowers to sh uh, shoo away those January blues. Yes. Yes, friends. Gosh, I... January did not start for me how I thought it would. I was in the happiest place on, on earth, but ended up in the hospital. All is okay. I'm taking it easy and yada, yada. But yeah, it was not the way I thought my week last week would go. And I probably am having a little pity party for myself coming back to all this crazy. So, you know, maybe there is some, some truth to the, that one commenter's critique, but that's okay. If you can't have a pity party with your friends, who can you have a pity party with? I don't know. All right, this is my, um, my shell pink that I actually called Sweet. And this was also inspired, a lot of Holbein, friends. I really, I really love Holbein. Um, I painted with this Holbein palette, this one here, for the better part of like, three years at one point. Um, but it was inspired by this little bad boy right here. Right there. A little brighter theirs is. Mine's a little more muted, which I wanted. Oh. So um, I started talking about what makes a paint professional. The use of pure pigments no fillers, um, the use, uh, not, not light fastness. Light fastness is not a requirement um, in my book and in many, many of the books out there for um, professional grade pigment uh, paints. Um, and then for me, uh, it's uh, experiential. This is the big thing that is missing in a lot of conversation on YouTube. Um, I believe the assessment of a paint's professionalism, if you will, is a factor of use. You want your paints to do a certain thing on the page, right? Up until the point that I designed my palette, this was my experience with professional plus a zillion other brands, right? This was my experience. This is what professional did on the page. Some moved easier, some didn't because of the presence or lack thereof of ox gall, et cetera, right? But there was a certain way that professional paints felt underhand. And so when I designed mine, I wanted mine to feel the same underhand. And after using them almost exclusively for two plus years, they do. That is the perspective I'm coming from not one of trying to mislead or dupe or um, be non-transparent, 
I am truly pulling the words from many of the commenters. Okay, pity party over. <laughs> oh gosh, at least I can laugh at myself, right? Right? All right. Next up, there's only two left. This is my version. I call this one calm, but it is definitely um, a result of my love affair with Daniel Smith's Buff Titanium. Mine is warmer, and as you will see soon, mine has more pigment load. That's what I wanted. All right, Daniel Smith. Oh gosh, she's buried. The magnets on some of these palettes are not the best. I need to redo them. Okay. There is my Daniel Smith. The, Daniel Smith's titan, buff titanium takes a little more zhuzhing to build up that mass tone. And I didn't like that. So I wanted to do something a little better. Well, more to my liking. Not better necessarily. So there you can see. Oh boy, stuff's falling off the back of the painting table. You know it's getting good. All right. And last but not least, the infamous fluorescent. Mine is Brett. Honestly, meant truly meant to be mixed. It adds a certain magic to mixes. That is how I teach it to be used. On its own, it can be frightening. Inspired by case for making handmade watercolor brand that I consider professional. Some do not. Whoop. And mine is brighter. Go figure. And there she is. Thank you all for being here so much. There's still 285 people here at Holy Crow. I love this. I actually love this comment. Um, I guess the experience for the artist can translate to the feeling for a customer, but not always. My favorite whoosh blue is a cheap brand. Good for me. Will fade on my wall though. Haha. -ha. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's really important to, uh, when I do reviews, I love, I, I love giving way more context than most. Like I am a loose floral painter. I typically paint one to two, one to three layers. I don't do it a lot of glazing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Context is so important in reviews. All right. So friends, if you do have specific questions, I appreciate, I have just been rambling on defending my palette and its honor. <laughs> just kidding. Truly, I know that's how some are going to see it. It's okay, but I just wanted to get back to basics. And it's actually been really soothing for me to go back to some of the, the stuff that I did in the very early stages in the trenches of development. And it kind of healed my heart a little bit. So I appreciate you being um, here with me for it. But uh, please get me some questions. I'm here. It doesn't have to be about anything we've talked about so far today, if you have painting questions or product questions, I actually have two of your palettes. Kathy says, uh, one, purchase from your website, one from a watercolor swap group. I love them so much. I keep one at home in one of my car. Ah, I love that. Virginia. Thank you. See you on Patreon. Yes. I do care. I really, I, I care. Sometimes I feel like if it's possible to care too much, that's where I'm at. Yeah, the old packaging did say dyes because that's what I was told by my manufacturer. And I remember I questioned them because there was no mention of dyes on the third party testing that I was given when we first developed the colors and the combin like the convenience mixture of pigments. There was no mention of dyes to my understanding. And I questioned them and questioned them and questioned them. And they said, no, th th this one is a dye. This one is a dye, but only a little bit, only a little bit, you know. And I don't care about dyes. And I was like, well, fine. I'm just going to, you know, I know some people get nervous about that. So I'm going to just assume there are dyes in them. Um, but like I said, when my, uh, when that woman went on maternity leave, things got a lot clearer um, when um, her replacement came into play. 
therapeutic professional? I don't know. Um, I, here's the thing, um, using um, non-light fast pigments uh, or paint uh, formulations that contain non-light fast pigments, um, you can protect your artwork. There is, uh, it's kind of like an onion, multiple um, layers of protection. That's what I advocate for. Um, True View Glass is a UV blocking, UV ray blocking glass. I think it's called True View. Uh, it's more expensive. Yes, indeed it is. Um, and then a UV spray after your paint has fully dried and cured. Yes, watercolor um, can be referred to as curing. Um, the longer a watercolor finished painting sits, the more resistant it's going to be to lifting and any kind of like environmental factors. Um, so I like to let mine cure for a good couple of weeks and then I spray them with a UV spray. So that is a two layer protection option um, for, yes, prevent fading by using the Krylon Fine Fixative. Thank you, Jennifer. Yep. Watercolor liquid paints. Yes, I can. How are Rosa paints? Have you tried them? Yes, Mandy. Actually, Rosa inspired um, my blue right up here. Um, the review Lindsay did was on her YouTube channel. Yes, Lindsay's review was super, super useful for folks who do more realistic painting, maybe a lot of glazing. Like I'm talking like 10 plus layers of glaze. Lindsay does a lot of glazing and more opaque colors are very tricky when it comes to glazing. And I just mean they're unnecessarily annoying when it comes to glazing. However, you can look at some of my videos here. I did lemons, I did tulips, I did pomegranates, uh, where I actually did a lot of glazing and it is possible, but it can be more troublesome. Um, this is a piece I did. This probably has about six layers done with this palette. Um, I'm trying to remember, there might've been some others. No, I think this was just exclusively my palette. Um, this is the pomegranate piece that I did. I think this was a live um, on this channel. Maybe not though. Um, but see, glazing with my palette, when you're using um, a lot of, this was the staining colors, the more opaque purple, things can get a little heavy. I don't mind it. But yes, Lindsay's audience, if they paint more like her style, her review was dead, dead nuts on for that, right? Sorry for the language. No, I can't design paint for everything. Yeah, I, um, I, I try, when I send my products for review, I send them in a press box that has a lot of information in the lid and in the base of the box. Um, I, I always hope that that information will be read and taken into account. Um, I can't say whether or not it was with this, with Lindsay's review. Another piece I did recently um, with a lot of the opaques in my palette. This was the rose I did with Emma. I'm pretty sure I used my palette on that one. There's that. This is one of the first swatches that I did. This swatch is, I'm pretty sure, over three years old. Um, to the best of my memory, is over three years old. And I just thought that'd be fun to show. This one. Cute. Gosh, I love that one. This one just like poured out of my brush when I did it. Anywho. But this is the most recent one that I even shocked myself. I was like, dang, I didn't think my palette had it in her, but she did. <laughs> Thank you, Val. Yes, get your paints out, Virginia. There, yes, there is a wax protector too. I bought it recently. I have not tested it yet. Is it this one, Dorland's? Yes, I bought this. And I'm going to be curious about giving that some, some time to test for sure. Yes. Being an artist does require a thick skin. My skin is thicker than it used to be, but I'm still like, oof. Yes, absolutely. I love seeing the paintings again. Thank you, Mel. Happy memories. Dorland's is great for pastels too. Okay. How do I store my paintings? I have, um, I kind of, it's a, it's like a little bit of a rotation. Um, I have a cart that I store them on first, kind of upright out of direct sunlight. When that fills, they go into closed drawers, still out of direct sunlight, organized by kind of 
um, genre, if you will, and then they get sent up to my other studio to be scanned for licensing, et cetera, et cetera. And then they get stored again in files out of direct sunlight. How do I store all my paint tins? I have the really simple white um, art carts that have multiple drawers. They work great. Yay, Jazz has 10 paintings. Woohoo! What made you start YouTube? Oh, gosh. Um, I started YouTube in 2016. Actually, I started posting to YouTube in like 2011 um, as part of my wedding business. Um, but it was very kind of sporadic. I wasn't committed to a schedule. And then in 2016, I, I have to grab something. Um, in 2016, I launched my first coloring books for watercolor and I, you know, at the request of my, at the request of my publisher, they were like, well, you got to market these things. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera and I'm like, oh, I do really. Um, so I started a YouTube channel and that's when I, I saw rapid growth and then got too busy in my, um, wedding business to keep it going and the books were selling. So I just stopped posting. So, um, it's funny. I was on YouTube as a watercolor artist, um, in the early days, but I just didn't stick around, which is a bummer. Oh, hi. What are you doing? Okay. Yeah. So I wish I would have stuck around, but I didn't. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do a test swatch first for sure with that wax. Yep. How important is light fastness real? It's super important to some people. Um, for me, it's just not because I found ways to protect. I, I always talk about, I have this little painting of a pig I did with Windsor and Newton professional paints, um, including a lot of opera rose. And that thing is on my mother's front porch that is just full of windows. It's been there since high school. And um, has it faded a little? Yeah, but let me tell you what, like actually I have photos of it in its original state when I first painted it because it was in competitions and like it just doesn't look that different and like I just always remember that and like you know not, I'm not saying it's not important but I don't think it it needs to be such a point of contention and a reason to vilify and undermine or to make people feel less than that pomegranate was the first paint along live I did with you oh gosh cool have I ever tried Bible art journaling? Um, I have never tried it with watercolors. I would love to. I actually have, I, I forget which company did it. They did like an art Bible, like an art journal Bible that had like bigger columns, like side columns. And um, I still have it. It's still sitting in the box. Maybe, maybe I need to pull it out. I would have to do some like watercolor ground for sure. Um, yeah. I am definitely double loading here. Keep those questions coming, friends. Can you show me how to mix your palette to get a dark, like, paints gray? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I actually did it here on this swatch sheet that I showed earlier. Let me show it to you now so it's dry. This is kind of Payne's Grayville, right? The blue, the purple, the brown. Go back a little more blue, a little the red. Now, Payne's Gray is one of those colors that really is different from brand to brand, I have found. So, so it was a lot blue, purple, brown little bit of this red and then you know it's almost like a, a to taste situation like add more brown more blue more red to taste if that makes sense like salt and pepper all right but i love this this is a color i call muddy the other thing i love about my palette um it because it doesn't explode because it is vegan um I feel like the the pigments kind of mingle on the page and do almost like a faux granulation sometimes, which I love. So purple, uh, blue, purple, brown, a little bit of red from my palette. 
that's going to give you a version of pains. Um, yes, I did reach out to Lindsay. She is going to do an update. I think she actually updated some of the information. She was so gracious in her description. Um, because uh, one of the things she did update was if you ever have a defect or something doesn't seem right, even if it's a year later, you can reach out for a free replacement. Um, and then I know she's going to do something on her blog and show the photo of the packaging she was so supposed to receive. Um, so yeah, she definitely, thank you for bringing that up. She's been wonderful. Um, is water color ground similar to gesso? No. Um, Watercolor ground, um, I love Golden makes a great one. Um, Schmenka makes a good one. It's it's um, it's like a primer that's applied that makes pretty much any surface feel like you're painting on watercolor paper, whereas gesso is like a thinned out acrylic with a very, very almost like minuscule grit to it that is really just for priming canvas um, for acrylic painting um, or for acrylic uh, gouache painting. That is my understanding. I do use Jessa, though, as a mixed media thing. I've gotten some flack for it. That was fun. I'm so sorry. Is somebody trying to ask a question? Hobby Hopper. Let me, I want to make sure. I'm, they're, they're flying by quite quickly. Keep the questions coming. Why? You don't answer them. Okay. Um. Sorry, I'm trying to. They are they are flying by quite quickly. Um, mixing is so hit or miss for me. Well, then don't mix. Unless, you know, if you're enjoying the mixing, keep at it. Yeah, trying to paint, talk, and answer questions is super hard to do. Uh, let's see here. Thank you for the dark mix. I joined late, but I hate that you were feeling down. It's okay. I'm feeling much better because I've hung out with my friends. Um, Yes, I'm trying to focus on the positive for sure. But I, I just really um, want to reiterate kind of the, there's a more somber note from the beginning, friends. But really, I just, I think we need to be just so much more mindful of what we say and how we say it. I know, I, I don't mean to be like your mom. I'm not here to be anybody's mom. But like, it's tiresome to see um, kind of lazy words out in the ether. And what do I mean by lazy words? Words that just don't have a consideration of context, a consideration of experience, a consideration of the people on the other end's feelings. Um, I, I just think we need to be less lazy and more mindful. That That is my hope. So you can't criticize anything. Nope, of course you can. Um, there, I do believe there is a, I just, I believe folks need to actually wait longer before they pontificate in a comment section. I think you need to think about what you want to say. Um, I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like, oh my gosh, I don't have time for this, but it's just how I feel. Um, it's something I do. I do feel like you can be critical, um, but also be logical and recognize where your critique may have pitfalls for lack of experience with a particular product. No, definitely not. Nope, Lindsay's review, I there were comments on in Lindsay's comment section that use lazy words absolutely. I will I will confirm that, but no, Lindsay's words were thorough, succinct, um and uh heartfelt, kind. It was, um, it was commenters. Thank you for um, that clarification. I think we've got some worried folks in the, uh, on the live here that think I'm mad at Lindsay. <laughs> I'm not, I, I am just not seeing, can we buy individual refills of your palette? Yes, um, they are not for sale on Amazon open stock. It's just too costly. Amazon takes a huge cut of every sale I make. Um, so uh, we have limited quantities available at christyrice.com, but you need to contest, contact us directly for them. I've been very open about it. Um, hello at Christy Rice, attention Kristen, paint refills in the subject line. 
If you forget to put it in the subject line, we'll still read the email. But yes, we do have open stock. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, replacement hat pans are available for Christie's palette for $5 US. I think they're actually six, uh, but maybe you're right. I can't remember. Yes, I mean, this is actually what I'm talking about. Like there are, there's even some meanness going on in these comments. Like just, just please breathe okay just want to reiterate just because i'm going through these comments again no i was not implying that lindsay's words were lazy stop trying to catch me up a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver woof love that M. E. stevens how i use gesso with watercolor oh gosh yes and since we have do I have any gesso here? Um, I still have some wet stuff. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about is my paints stay wet forever. Forever. They're crazy. Like, these are still wet. Some of these, the mask tone areas are still wet. And then some of the middle parts are still damp. So that, that actually is another, that's more of a factor of paper. But um, just something that came to my head. I don't have any gesso here, but this golden acrylic, it's a high flow acrylic, is going to do very similar things um, that gesso would in watercolor. So just watch this dark spot right here. I'm going to spray. I love the way that gesso or high flow acrylic kind of explodes in watercolor. You see that? So I will use it for like skies or like fun linear details. See that? Isn't that fun? So pretty. So that's how I use it. Highlights that I want kind of diffused, if that makes sense. Wait, so you don't want an honest review and for people to say what if they like or do, I don't know what that means. Nope. I do want an honest review. I, I don't actually know how to respect because that sentence, I think there's some words missing. Um, if you want to repost that I will do my best to answer it I but I do oh okay so I clarified no I, I no 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 it was um some of the side comments side side threads of conversation I had no issue um if you go to my stories they should still be there from yesterday I was very upfront about I had no issue with Lindsay's review at all it was there were some folks, there was a lot of folks, um, you know, in the comment section just being absolutely short-sighted and nasty. And using very, like, um, using words like misleading, like I was being purposely misleading by saying professional. It was like borderline slander, I felt. Um, some may disagree, but yeah, it felt borderline slanderous. The comments, not Lindsay. <laughs> How much or how many of your palettes did you use up during those almost exclusively painted with your own paints for those two years? I've never used one up. I've never, let's see, I've never used one up totally. So this is what I have sitting next to me. Um, I know my palettes, when you first start using them, they seem kind of soft and you're probably like, oh my gosh, they're going to, they're going to go away so quickly. Um, but I've never, that's a great question. Yeah, there is a video. Um, this one I use with gouache. That's why it has a big G on it. Um, and this was actually a mistake. This came with the wrong color during the sample phase. Um, but yeah, I use, what are these? About 10 of these and I've never use that up. Um, and it's actually more than two years because I was getting samples of my palettes while I was developing my brushes, which were launched first. Um, great question. You're welcome, Hobby Hopper. I'm sorry. It kept like getting like, I don't know, the, the, these comments just go through so quick. Um, sometimes it's just like mind boggling. Um, so anyway, I don't know if, um, and this one is missing. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh, I know where this one is. I took it, I took this out of here and put it in my big empty 40, uh, 46 pan empty palette and took it to Disney and um, 
I, I think I left it in Disney. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Last week was kind of weird. Um, hi, Melissa. There's a lot of unkind people out there. Yeah. I didn't watch the entire week. She needs to do a follow-up if there aren't any dyes in your product. Um, it's okay. Uh, you know, she took so much time. Lindsay took so much time with that review because I don't know if you saw it, friends, but there was also kind of like a prequel to that review. She did an unboxing of a, a bunch of different new products and she asked her audience what they wanted to review on first. And it was like between me and I think a stamp set. I'm not sure. Um, and like she did a lot, she used my paints and brushes a lot, even during that unboxing. So she did a lot of work. So honestly, like I would be thrilled with just an update to the de description. Like I'm, I, but I have no expectations. Um, I know how much work goes into what she does. Yeah. Um, I did ask, Sue, you're right. I did, and I did ask Lindsay to review. And I was nervous. She said that in the review, like Christy was nervous because I know she will be super dupes honest. Um, oh, Michelle, you're right. I do need to get a couple moderators. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I'm, I'm beyond belief. And it's still 289 people in here. Like, I, ugh, it's just crazy to me. I have been painting a lot in an old book. My art is still an experiment stage. I love it. Yeah, sometimes Kelly helps with my comments from my other business, um, but it is our busy, busy time of year and weddings, so there's just no way. Kristen, my brand manager, she is swamped. She's working from home. We had ice today. Oh, yeah, yeah, the kids are home. Beverly, thank you. I am so glad I've been a blessing to you. I appreciate you so much, though. Yeah, you know, honestly, I've seen um, other um, creators, when you're asking a question to actually start your sentence with three question marks. Um, uh, so that might be something I do in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Lean. Um, use of literature and art, yeah. Oh gosh, Brenda, that's so cool. Every time you talk to your sister, she's painting with me. I love it. Jennifer, I'll moderate. I know you'd moderate. Is this Thursday Live still happening? It is not. Um, I moved it to next week. Yeah, showing you the love. Thank you, Virginia. And why only 17 likes? I don't know. I haven't asked for any likes. Yes. I, I, I admire Lindsay. I think she is a treasure. I have used that word many times regarding her in the last uh, 24 hours. Um, there's more, oh, the screen isn't refreshing. Okay, gotcha. All right, friends. This has been a blast. Thank you for being with me through my little trip down memory lane. Um, I appreciate you putting up with my, my um, I don't know what you want to call it, my venting, my self-loathing, whatever it may be. I'm just here and I'm just being real, friends. My other camera is shut off. I So you're not going to see my face. Actually, no, you're not going to see my face. Um, I appreciate this community so much. Um, if you have any questions, if you feel that any of my words have not been clear, like, for example, earlier when someone thought maybe I was implying that Lindsay was using lazy words, please reach out to me. Please don't let it fester. Okay. Core doesn't have ox gall. Nicole, you would know. Okay. Good to know. But it is a proprietary ox gall like substance that does similar, like that moves the color like ox gall, correct? 273 likes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I will keep sharing my heart. Um, all the awesome watercolor leaders. You know, I feel like we're like, um, we're so different. Like Lindsay and I, and then you've got like the Chloe Rose Arts, and you've got Sarah Renee Clark, and you've got Emma, and you've got Jenna Rainey. Like, I feel like we need to realize and recognize, and we all paint differently, and we all use different things that all of us are part of this puzzle, this path to joy, right? No one's wrong, no one's right. 
there are certainly room for critique. There's certainly room to improve. There's certainly things that down the road, I would love to um, embellish and edit and um, change even about this palette, just as an example. There's just, I want to see less room for smugness. Watercolor family. That's right. Never quit. Moving on to new things works. Just take us with you. <laughs> yes, Steve Mitchell. Woohoo! I'm I'm honored to be in that trifecta. Thank you. Yes, you've all led me into a happy art practice. I am so grateful. Yes, isn't it a wonderful place? I want to keep it wonderful. Let's keep these streets clean. I. <laughs> yes. I really don't believe any of us are trying to undermine or dupe you or waste your money. I don't. I don't. And I kind of feel like after today, I think you should know, I would tell you if I felt we were. All right. Friends, thank you so much. Have an awesome rest of the day and make sure you're making room for all that happy painting.